Hello YouTube world, uh, this is Uncle Fester with the uh, Shade Tree Survivalist, the southern chapter down here in South Georgia. I uh, was watching a video by my buddy Mac Daddy up in North Georgia and he was uh, he did a very fine video, long video, on the 1911 and uh, I think the name of this video is probably going to be the other side of the, the fence. Uh, as you can see I have my two Glocks on the table here. Uh, to make a long story short on, on something, I at one time I owned a Springfield 1911A1 and I also owned a uh, 1911 clone and I had a lot of plans to sit down with each gun and customize it and I had a uh, last man standing syndrome so to speak. I wanted to get the two little Glocks up under the arms and pull them out like Bruce Willis did in, in last man standing because I thought that was really cool. Sometimes Mac Daddy calls me Hollywood. And I, I got that flair. I like a, I, I like that. But I had, I ended up trading trading both of those guns for a, a Glock 22 and a, a Glock 27. And I just thought I would give my reasons for that particular choice. It wasn't an easy choice by no means. Um, I loved my 1911s. Don't get me wrong. Originally, I was a revolver man. I still am a revolver man at heart. Uh, always carried like the old six gun cowboy shooters that's, that's still uh, dear to my heart I love the old Colts, the Rugers any of those old six shooters like that right there especially the Rugers, Rugers is what I got Ruger cowboy action guns is what was the first gun I ever bought was a little 22 single action cowboy gun and I ended up getting a matching pair of those and then I ended up with a uh, Mac Daddy's old Dragoon and love those guns uh, but I digress on that. Uh, carried a J frame 38 Smith & Wesson Chief model for ever and a day. That was my second pistol. I loved it. I pocket carry so that gun was perfect for that but there, there came a time and a place where I felt like the 38 cartridge wasn't really enough to, to take care of what I wanted to take care of and five and five shots and having to reload after five and everybody else toting around 15 round magazines and 20 round magazines and 30 round magazines and I just said well you know if I got into a real altercation with that little 38 I was going to be in a lot of trouble so I began on this long quest of trying to find a pocket gun well I found that pocket gun in this Glock 27 and after I got the Glock 27 I found out that the Glocks for this big one and this little one are interchangeable. This is a 15 round Glock 22 mag. Let me take it here and it will fit. Just so you know it's empty. It will fit into my 27. In fact the, the Glock 23's which is the 40, these, are, the, these two are 40 caliber of course. Uh, they will fit into this. I can fit the 23 uh, mags into this 27. I can also fit the Glock 22 mags into this. Now I can't fit this one into that one of course because it's too short. But still I can carry these two guns on me at once because I pocket carry this one and I generally carry this one in a shoulder holster. I have all of the mags that I've got for this one will go to this one. So I've got two of these little mags like this that I carry, but all of the rest of the mags I can just buy for the Glock 22, and it converts over to that one. Now that was a really big selling point for me when I was making the decision to get rid of the 1911s. I will tell you something else. This is something that I found. I've carried this pistol for three years, and I don't know whether you can tell it because it's black and the light's not too good where I'm at, but that's been pocket carried for... Uh, three years. I've, I've never cleaned these things except for when I shoot them for the most part. I know I'm lazy but it has no rust. The coating on these things is bomb proof. I'm telling you. Uh, the this, this this weapon right here has has never failed to feed me at all. The only time that I've ever had a failure to feed or a lockup of any kind was when I went out and I bought a 30 round Korean mag. I will tell you this about a Glock. If you're not willing to put out the money to buy 
a Glock mag with the uh, uh, original Glock mags or Glock, Glock factory mags don't mess with it they are expensive these I just got finished buying a 10 round one of these and it was like 25 bucks they are they have been more expensive you get sometimes right now it's not so bad but during the band it was like impossible to find Glock bags and when you did find them they were trying to get 40 I, I think I found a 15 round like this right here at uh, uh, Gander Mountain and they wanted 40 bucks for it so Best thing to do is kind of shop around with some place like Brownells or, or Midway if you're going to do hunt, hunt for Glock mags. Uh, a lot of people could buy them off of eBay. eBay, I've never seen a 15 rounder on eBay. Usually, if they come up, they're gone like that. And most of the time, all you'll find is the 10 rounders, and most of the time, they want 25 bucks for those. So, I don't like the 10 rounders, but sometimes that's what you can get. I'll tell you, uh, one of the other things about a Glock, one of the, the main reason that I chose a Glock, and it was one of the, 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 the things about the 1911 personally myself that I did not like, was that it had too many external safeties on it for me. I mean, I'm used to a revolver. If you're a revolver guy, then you know all you got to do with a revolver is pull it out, point, and shoot. That's what I, personally, that was what I got used to. You know, I don't mind cocking a hammer, but it's still yet. Yeah, you pull it out, cock it point shoot there's not a whole lot of messing around uh, I like that I own a Springfield XD if you've looked at any of my videos you can see see me shooting it but the XD had a tang safety and I hate a tang safety I'm sorry I know that this is there for a good reason and everything but when I pull a gun out I don't want to be fumbling with the safety I really don't want to be fumbling with the hammer too much when I pull an automatic out I want to be able to pull it out point and shoot so this and this, the Glocks, all you have on this Glock is this one right here. If you all know whether you can see it, I'll see if I can get close enough to the camera that maybe you can see it. But there's a little piece right, right there. The camera ain't really picking it up, but there's a little piece right there. That's the only external safety this gun has. Now, in saying that, I don't want people to think that I'm just this Glock fanboy. Uh, Glock's got a lot of things about it that I personally don't like. Uh, one of the things is that on my Matt, Ra uh, Matt rag rags me all the time about the fact that when I say when I, I text him, we and him text each other a lot, is that my phone will turn Glock into block, and that's basically the truth. They're blocks. They're they're you know they they've got a plastic bottom, they've got the uh, metal top they're not pretty they're ugly uh, if you're used to shooting a 1911 your point of aim is going to be way off because they've got this this weird sort of well you can see it better on the big one this uh this 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 angle of of the the, the back is nothing like what a, a 1911 is so if you're used to shooting a 1911 and you pick up one of these your point of aim is not going to be spot on I mean I'll just tell you that up front it does have plastic sights uh, one of the things that happened to this one is that I used to carry a mag on in the same pocket and it actually wore down the side of the plastic sight on this one. Uh, like I said, you know, matte like steel and that's one of the selling points of a, a 1911 is it's all steel. On the upside, these are light. I could tell you when I was toting that 1911, that bad boy was heavy. And I know that I'm a big dude, and I shouldn't I shouldn't be all into that. But when you was carrying around that all steel 1911 and and about four or five mags on you, it weighed a lot. It was a lot. Uh, when I come over to these, I could tell you that I looked at a Glock 45. I like a 45 uh, bullet. I feel like a 45 ACP. I mean, you know, you're not going to shoot somebody, and they're going to just you know disappear in a uh, a shower of sparks. But I, you know, a 45, I feel like it's proven to stop people. Uh, I never could find a pocket gun in 45 ACP that I personally liked. Everybody that said anything, you know, I know that uh, XD, when I had the XD, I looked real hard at buying one of the uh, XD S's, which is the little, the small version. It's got like five or seven shots in it. I don't remember exactly which. I think it was five shots. I looked at that gun really, really hard. Uh, I did not like the fact that the 
I had an XDM. The XDM mags and the XDS mags were not interchangeable. The XDS was a single stack, whereas the uh, XDM was a double stack. So you couldn't interchange the mags. They didn't have that going on. And everybody that I heard say anything about an XDS said that it would eat your hand alive. They said if you was going to shoot the gun, that you had to shoot the gun with gloves on. Now, I never did shoot that. I never did try it out. But it, it was just a lot of little things like that that turned me off from that particular pistol. I think later on, I think they started having problems with the uh, one of the pins on it breaking. I don't I don't really know that. I just That's just something that I heard. So, you know, I just kind of got turned off on that. So, I did a compromise with the 40. I didn't really want the 9mm. One of my first guns was a Beretta. You know, I saw the Lethal Weapon movies and I just felt like I had, a, I had to have an M92F Beretta. Loved the gun. Gun never did have any problems with it. Never had a failure to, to feed. Always shot everything I put in it. Wasn't a finicky gun. Loved the gun. Would own another F, F90, uh, own another M92 Beretta right now if I, I could find one at the right price. But, for myself, if I'm going to defend myself and my family, I wanted something bigger than a 9mm. Uh, I know it's all about precision. I know it's all about, I know they've got the, the, the uh, XP stuff that's out there. But uh, I just, I don't know, I just kind of lost confidence in 9mm when I was uh, watching a buddy shoot plates. And, you know, he self-loaded it. It was, a, it was a low charge on the 9mm. But for him to knock over those steel plates, he was having to shoot it two and three times. Whereas when I took the 40 out there, every time I shot it with, with one, 140, it fell over. So while the, the, there might, might not be a whole lot of difference and, you know, he wasn't shooting XPs or hot bullets or whatever. You know, I ain't, I'm not even trying to get into that, that, that. I feel like if you feel like 9mm is going to protect you, hey, carry that. You know, the best carry gun, the best caliber is the one that you're willing to carry on you all the time. Uh... One of the other things that, that really sold me on uh, the Glocks as well was uh, how easy, especially this one, when I was looking at it, is that, well, you can't see it, but this one right here has night sights on it. I feel like if you're going to have any weapon that you ought to put some night sights on it. If you can't aim the weapon in the dark, it's of no use to you. Carry a flashlight, but you know, if you, you don't happen to have your flashlight on you, but you do have your gun, that's always a good one. Um, I know a lot of people say that you know how the heck do you carry a pocket carry one of these it's not as hard as you think if you got a big enough pair of pants not that big of a deal I generally wear my pants about two or three sizes bigger than what I need because I like to have I like for I like to be comfortable and I like to be able to carry my stuff in there if you've ever seen Uncle Fester's uh, what's in Uncle Fester's pockets you'll you'll know what I'm talking about uh, a couple of detractors there again it's plastic Hey, it's a Mattel toy. Uh, I have seen one of my one of my my members down here named Ar Irish. He's taking he he's an M and P fan all the way down the line. He's talked taking a soldering gun and and done like star bursts all over his things and grips and him. he's had the slide cut down and all that. Probably got close to a thousand dollars in his gun. Hey, you know I don't have a problem with that. But at the end of the day, this is a workhorse. It's kind of like, uh, I don't know, putting a $100 saddle, saddle on a $50 horse to myself. Uh, there's an old saying that, they, that we used to have in the neighborhood that you can't polish a turd. I mean, you know, the more you try to polish it, the more it smears. Uh, I don't like the fact that this one right here has got plastic sights. I haven't got around to replacing that. This one has metal sights, so I don't have a problem with this. With the, the, It's got the night sights and they're metal. Uh, reliability you can't beat it on reliability but there again it's like I say at the end of the day it is it will never ever no matter how many bells and whistles you put on it be as elegant as a 1911 I like both I know that they say you have to either be a 1911 fan or you gotta be a Glock fan I like both sooner or later I'm going to end up buying another 1911 probably two because I like to have when I when I do the 1911s I like to have a pair in my hand uh, but that's that's pretty much all I really got to say about it. Is is you know, uh, if you're a newbie, if you don't, if you've never shot a gun, don't know anything about gun, this is not the gun that you need to start off with. They have something out there called Glock Leg. 
There's a lot of people that when they reach in to pull the gun that they haven't got their self uh, trained not to put their finger in the trigger. You pull it out, it gets snagged, and it goes off. If you have small kids around the house, this is not really a good weapon, especially unless you don't carry one in the chamber. Uh, if you carry one in the chamber with these, a lot of people say, well, it ain't safe to carry one in the chamber because it's only got the trigger safety. That is wrong. It has three, it has close to, I think, three internal safeties in this. You can drop it all day long. It's not going to go off. It's safe to carry one in, in the chamber because I've carried one in the chamber and carried it in my pocket for three years. I've never had any problems. I learned very soon that you keep your finger out of the trigger guard till you've got it pointed out away from yourself and then you've got it pointed at what you want to to destroy then you put your finger in as long as you can remember that they're safe but if you're a newbie this might not be the weapon for you you have to know what you're doing to carry one of these because if that you've only got one one thing and I mean it's got a once it's cocked there again empty nothing in the bottom it's got a very easy trigger pull and any toddler can pick that weapon up and shoot it if there's one in the chamber it's going off I can't think of anything more terrifying than a toddler walking down the, the hall with a loaded Glock. One in the chamber, okay? It can go off. It doesn't take a lot. So, there is that detractor. I mean, it's, it's, I really think that a, that a Glock's really more for a more experienced shooter. Um, I think I've covered just about everything that I need to do. Uh, you need to know that the, the mags, they're plastic as well. They do have stainless steel ones out there, but you pay for those. Uh, I think I paid five, 500 for this one. No, 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 no. I paid, I think right off the bat, this one right here was running about 550, and this one was running about 550 at the time as well. So they're, they're an affordable gun. This was a brand new one, so it was 550, and I think this one right here was a little bit. I want to say it was 500, 500 or 550 on that one, so they're relatively cheap. Honestly, when they make them, it takes the the manufacturers that make them. I think they make them for like 45 bucks, so they make a lot of money off of these these weapons. Uh, the markups pretty much up there, uh, but it's a workhorse. It'll never be pretty, but it does what I want it to do in the fact that, you know, the, the coating's bulletproof. Your low-end 1911s are not bulletproof. I had that clone that I had. If I handled it once, if I touched it at any time with my fingers, if I did not wipe it down when I pulled it back out, you could see right where my fingers touched that. So if you're getting a cheaper Glock, a lot of times the coating is not very good. Uh, one of the other things about that the the glocks is that uh there again it's got a very high point of aim because it's, it's different i mean it's, it's not but uh with this one it's got a mag release i don't do the extended mag release for the same reason matt doesn't because if you've got the two-handed grip which I carry my thumb a little lower if you've got that extended thing you're going to end up hitting it easy to close up that's about the only external thing that you really have on a Glock to have to deal with so I just thought I would sit down and kind of give the other side of the fence or the other the other side of the story of, of why it is I got rid of my 1911s and I think I've droned on long enough and uh, this is Uncle Fester with uh, Shade Tree Survivalist Southern Chapter saying good night Y'all be good.